Hi everyone, this lesson is on the side effects of SSRI antidepressants, or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor medications. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what these medications are, we're also going to talk about what they are used for, and then we're going to talk about the side effects from their use and why those side effects occur. So the SSRIs are the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Some examples of these medications include Proxetine or Paxil, Fluoxetine or Prozac, Sertraline or Zoloft, and Acetylopram or Ciprolax. These are medications that inhibit the reuptake of serotonin, as their name implies. So how they work is they actually inhibit the reuptake of serotonin from the synaptic cleft. So this neuron here releases serotonin, and oftentimes there's some leftover within the synaptic cleft that is retaken up by reuptake transporters. But with the SSRIs, the SSRIs actually block these transporters. So the reuptake of neurotransmitters are prevented, which leaves more serotonin within the synaptic cleft. That increased serotonin in the synaptic cleft actually alters and downregulates certain serotonin receptors on the postsynaptic neuron, which is this neuron here. So that was a brief overview of the mechanism as to SSRIs and how they work. If you want more information, please check out my lesson on SSRIs. SSRIs can be used to treat a variety of health conditions, including major depressive disorder and other depressive conditions. But not only can they be used to treat these conditions, they can also be used to treat anxiety disorders like generalized anxiety disorder and some other anxiety conditions. And they can also be used in the treatment of fibromyalgia. Now, the normal use of SSRIs can cause a variety of mild and or severe side effects. We're going to talk about those in this lesson. But not only can their normal use cause side effects, but if they're stopped too quickly or abruptly or the dose is reduced too quickly, this can lead to a condition known as antidepressant discontinuation syndrome, which has its own symptoms we're going to talk about as well in this lesson. And if these SSRIs are used at too high of a dose or if there are other factors that interact and cause too high of a level within the blood, this can lead to a condition known as serotonin syndrome. So we're going to talk about the side effects from normal use of SSRIs, and we're also going to talk about the symptoms that can occur from antidepressant discontinuation syndrome and serotonin syndrome in this lesson. Let's first talk about the side effects of normal use of SSRIs. We're first going to talk about the gastrointestinal side effects, as these are oftentimes very common compared to some other side effects we're going to talk about in this lesson. The first one we're going to talk about is abdominal pain. So this abdominal pain from SSRI use may be described as aches and pains. It may be diffuse, so can be throughout the entire abdomen, and it is a relatively common side effect of SSRI use. Patients on SSRIs can also experience dyspepsia. Dyspepsia is indigestion. And this is epigastric discomfort or pain. And it's oftentimes described as a gnawing or burning sensation. Some other gastrointestinal side effects include bowel habit changes. These include having loose or watery stools. So having diarrhea can be a side effect of SSRI use. Constipation may occur, but that is going to most often occur with the SSRI paroxetine or Paxil. And these bowel habit changes, especially the diarrhea and the abdominal pain we talked about before, they may be more common with sertraline or Zoloft use. Some other side effects that can affect the gastrointestinal system include nausea and vomiting. So this nausea and vomiting may be more likely to occur with initial use and may improve over time. And again, this is going to be more common with sertraline use. Some other side effects of SSRI use include restlessness. So feeling jittery and restless may be side effects that can occur with the use of SSRIs, and this may contribute to poor sleep. We're going to talk about this later on as well. Now, there is a relatively low risk of restlessness, but it may be higher with certain SSRIs, including sertraline and fluoxetine. And then SSRIs can also lead to tremors. So involuntary shaking or jerking. This is going to be an action and resting tremor. So it can occur at rest or when doing some action, and it can occur most often in the hands. This is actually going to be the most common movement disorder caused by SSRIs, and it's estimated that it can affect up to 20% of patients on SSRIs. And this tremor is more likely to occur with the use of certain SSRI medications, including proxetine, citalopram, and fluoxetine. This citalopram is actually going to be different than escitalopram we talked about before. So there are two different medications that are similar. Citalopram was an older version, and it was modified to become acetylopram, and acetylopram has different and oftentimes lower risk of certain side effects, but acetylopram has certain side effects we're going to talk about more later on in this lesson. Some other side effects of SSRI use include sweating. 
So increased serotonin can lead to an increased body temperature. This can then lead to excessive sweating. This is actually going to be a relatively common side effect that is estimated to affect 7 to 19% of patients. Certain patient populations can also experience hyponatremia. Hyponatremia is low sodium levels in the blood. This is going to be more common in elderly patients on SSRIs. And the symptoms of hyponatremia include muscle aches and pains and headache in the more mild cases. And in, in the more severe cases, these can lead to symptoms of confusion, disorientation, and seizures. Now, SSRIs can also lead to sleep disturbances as well. This can either be increased sleep or decreased sleep depending on the SSRI. So fatigue or insomnia may occur. And again, this depends on which SSRI is being used. With regards to causing more fatigue, these include paroxetine, citalopram, and fluvoxamine. These are going to be SSRIs that cause more fatigue than other SSRIs do. Some SSRIs can cause decreased sleep. Oftentimes it's the ones that are going to cause restlessness that we talked about before. Weight changes can also occur with SSRI use. So SSRIs may cause weight loss or weight gain. Weight loss is going to be due to reduced appetite. And again, this depends on the SSRI being used. For instance, proxetine may cause more weight gain. As you can see, proxetine has among some of the higher and more challenging side effects from the SSRIs. So proxetine or Paxil is going to cause a lot of side effects compared to some of the other SSRIs. Anxiety can also be a side effect of SSRI use. This is going to most likely occur with initial use of SSRIs, but likely to improve over time. And this can occur along with the shakiness and agitation we talked about before. Sexual dysfunction can also occur with SSRI use. So sexual dysfunction may include decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, or anorgasmia. And it often leads to patients discontinuing medication. And this is actually going to be a relatively common side effect of almost all SSRIs. But again, there is a higher risk of this side effect with the use of proxetine. SSRIs can also lead to headaches as well, and this is going to be a tension type headache. And there is some evidence that SSRIs may be used for the prevention of migraine headaches. Dizziness is also another side effect of SSRI use. So feeling dizzy can be a relatively common complaint in patients who use SSRIs. It may affect up to 8% of patients on SSRIs. And the dizziness here may be exacerbated with head movements, and it can occur with discontinuation of an SSRI as well. Now, there are even more side effects of SSRI use. These include dry mouth. This is also known as xerostomia, which occurs with proxetine use. Blurred vision can also occur. This is going to be caused by dry eyes from hypolacrimation. And this is also going to occur with use of proxetine. And urinary retention can also occur with SSRI use. This is a very uncommon side effect of SSRIs, and it's more common with proxetine as well. These side effects are actually due to the anticholinergic effects from proxetine. Proxetine or Paxil actually has the most anticholinergic effects out of any of the SSRIs. So proxetine is the one you're going to want to remember with regards to a lot of side effects, including these ones we just mentioned here, dry mouth, blurred vision, and urinary retention. Issues with bleeding can also occur with SSRI use. So patients on SSRIs may have issues with bleeding. This actually leads to an increased risk of mucosal bleeding and easy bruising. And this is due to the fact that SSRIs can cause platelet dysfunction. And then some SSRIs can lead to prolonged QT. So the QT interval, which can be noted on an ECG, so very long QT here. So the QT interval may become prolonged with citalopram use. This is not going to be associated with escitalopram use, but citalopram use. And because of this, it's important to maintain a low dose of citalopram or use an alternative SSRI. And it's also important to assess potential of QT prolongation by other medications because the prolonged QT can lead to or increase the risk of torsade to point. Now that we've talked about the side effects of normal SSRI use, if there is too much SSRI use or too high of a level of serotonergic activity, this can lead to serotonin syndrome. And serotonin syndrome has particular symptoms. These include mental status changes like confusion and lethargy, autonomic dysfunction, which include fever, hypertension, and tachycardia. So high blood pressure, a fever, and a high heart rate, heart rate greater than 100 beats per minute. And it also has neuromuscular abnormalities, including clonus and tremor as well. And serotonin syndrome also causes increased gastrointestinal issues like diarrhea. If you want more information on serotonin syndrome, please check out my full lesson on that topic.
And then there is antidepressant discontinuation syndrome. So in the case where there's an abrupt cessation of the SSRI or there is a decrease in dose that is too quick, this can cause this condition to occur. So this condition can lead to certain symptoms, including flu-like symptoms, so malaise, feeling fatigued, so feeling generally unwell. This can be something that can occur with this condition. Insomnia can also occur as well. So this can worsen insomnia that a patient may be having from SSRI use in general. Nausea can also be something that can be found with this condition. Imbalance. Sensory disturbances can also be noted with this condition. So paresthesias, numbness, tingling sensations, shocking sensations around the body, and then hyperarousal, so agitation, anxiety, and aggression. And the way to remember symptoms of antidepressant discontinuation syndrome include finish, the mnemonic finish, F-I-N-I-S-H. So that mnemonic is going to be a way to remember these categories of symptoms. If you want to learn more about serotonin syndrome and antidepressant discontinuation syndrome, please check out my full lessons on those topics. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.